Welcome to HDTV. You're now rocking with your boy. You had a, an amazing sit down with Mac and Kobe oh, at the man. Mama Academy. You made me cry. That's so yeah, nice. Yeah, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Talk to us just about what that interview and what you took from them because their journeys were very similar coming up together. How special was that interview for you? Yeah, it meant a lot to me because I had covered the thick of them competing against each other, so I knew what that really I knew of that relationship and what it was and how tight they had been at the beginning and then how they had some separation not because anyone did anything wrong or there was no beef but just Girl. like as competitors and you grow apart and everything and i knew too from covering them both or, or having being friendly and, and working with them both post-career that they weren't really in touch in that close way they were good again they were totally good with each other i weren't mm -hmm. even like yeah. near yeah. implying anything else but they just you know life life mm -hmm. is life right yeah. and I knew I could see in the moment, the minute we brought them back together, just that all that energy was like, just was like back when they were like 20 years old and it was just everything. And then what was pretty awesome after that was seeing in the year that followed and unfortunately that's all we had. It was, it was really less than a year before he died, but that they really got close again. Yeah. And I think it was having that that sort of moment, a reason to be together, to have a two hour conversation. Mm -hmm. And then from that, it became like, oh, Hey, my kid's in this AAU tournament. Right, your kid, oh, let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's hang out at the AAU tournament. They were rooting for each other's kids at right. games and shit and talking. Mm -hmm. And that felt, especially now knowing what we know about the time that Kobe had left, like that felt really nice to me that in some tiny way, like just be, that circumstance helped bring them again, like not because there was any beef, but right. just back together into mm -hmm. in, the, in each other's circle again in a way that I think was really special. Um, and Kobe for me, and I've talked about this um I was starting out when Kobe was starting out and it was hard sometimes people just you know I'm very short I'm very girl I am by all the stuff um and didn't want to talk to me about stuff didn't want me around didn't take me seriously you know all the stuff that's just it's just harder it's harder when you're starting it's hard to get people to trust you one of the early teams I covered the coat the captain of the team and, and the general manager of the team would not answer a single question of mine they would just say next question because they, I was the first woman to cover them. They did not want a woman be writer, and they thought if they just didn't give me information or access, that I would just fail and not do well. And then shockingly, there'd be a man next time. So that that was some of the early stuff you have to deal with, or I had to deal with. And Kobe's rookie year, and you guys know this from knowing him, it was not a picnic. Not at all. You know, there were a lot of people who did not want him there. This kid from high school thought he could do everything that we turned out he could do but at that point no one knew for sure he could do there was a lot of resistance on an older lakers team there was stupid stuff like because kobe was there and he was under 21 they couldn't have beer in the locker room yeah. anymore i mean just like from the little to the big you know he comes in like a bull in the china shop so all of that so we really that rookie year um i came out to la to do a story on him and it started as an interview and we just ended up i remember like i can tell you exactly where we were sitting on a bench like you know, after long, it's like one of those time lapses where like the end of practice ends around you and then everybody slowly leaves and like the lights didn't actually go out, but that's what it mm -hmm. felt like. And just talking and talking about what it felt like to be the kid that nobody wanted there mm. and kind of had that early bond of that and then kind of to watch what he became and in my tiny microscopically smaller way what i got to become was something that that was very special throughout 20 years mm -hmm. of again a front row seat to his life yeah. and a bond we had and conversations we'd have and to be able to have had that moment with him and mac so soon close to the end it's not enough it's never right. gonna be enough but it felt like a pretty good thing to have gotten right. in you and i i mean that's when he passed, obviously the coverage we did on the jump was was nonstop yeah. and, and wasn't easy. But it was I just found it was so cool to get everyone's different story of Kobe. You know what I mean? Because everyone had this perception, mama, asshole, this, this, and that. But if he lets you in, mm -hmm. you got to see how special he was. So to be able to hear everyone share their different Kobe story and how he affected them and realize how many people he affected. Yeah. Obviously, I, I didn't want it to happen. And, and once it did happen, I mean, I guess, you know, the way you celebrate life was being able to hear all these amazing stories from, you know, this amazing person. So that was a tough, 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 tough time. Very tough times. Mm -hmm. Tough journey. And another example to people, by the way, that like you can grow and learn as a person. Mm. Like 
what you do in your life it doesn't have to be right. the end of your story. Mm-hmm. You can be a better person afterward. Yeah. And I think that's something that I would, that, you know, talk about messages from 2020. Right. Like, no one's story ends. There's no, oh, there's no period at the end. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously death, of, but even then, you know, Kobe has lived on since yeah, then. Right. So you got to keep going and keep getting better every day. So that was Rachel Nichols talking about how, um, you know, she cared about Kobe. So she was on the jump. Rachel Nichols, why are you capping? You never were a Kobe Bryant fan. I remember episode when um he died. And y'all talking about his legacy. Up here in LA and in the neighborhood that I grew up in and you know your discipline. You were on the bench right at that Obviously, if he could, if he could do girls, that, he can't. Even... And maybe they didn't get to game supporting the U.S. Women's National Soccer Team, Oregon Sabrina, Sabrina. Mm-hmm. Chipping in to women's sports. We love about him. We love the journey of the man trying to try for perfection. Yeah. And in so many ways, right? So many things that, that he felt like yeah. I can do better. Every time we seen him fall, he came back stronger and better. It just meant a lot to so many here. Thank you guys so much for everything today. I want to thank everyone who joined the show. Our condolences go out to the entire families of Kobe, Gianna, all seven other people who were lost in the accident. In honor of Kobe, we're going to end the show with 24 seconds of silence. Because she basically said on the episode about... um. She brought up his rape allegations and everything back in the day. Um, she was on all the smoke with Richard and and Steven Jackson, and I, I didn't like how they let her get away with that bogusness. But, of course, they're not because she's had them on their show before, and she's looked out for them in the ranks of bringing them onto the show. My thing is this. like, Why are all these media people capping? You guys did not like Kobe. Y'all treated Kobe as the enemy. Y'all hated on him. Y'all hated on him when Shaq was there. Y'all didn't give him any credit. His whole career was unfolding in front of us. Probably had one of the longest primes in history as a basketball player. You guys still treated him like crap. Y'all, y'all, y'all pissed on him. Y'all spit on him. Y'all it on him in his grave. You know, y'all laughed about him. Y'all talked about him. Y'all, y'all always had an agenda that was something against him. Y'all always treated him as if he was never important. Like he never could have the impact to be in the top five or top 10. And you guys used to ridicule Kobe Bryant fans who would go out there and celebrate Kobe Bryant. And you guys still would tear him down. I remember Kobe gave advice to LeBron and you basically ripped Kobe the whole episode talking about. You know, what would you know? You know, you you shot the ball a lot. So, you know, you guys still were taking jabs at him on ESPN. Then you guys had him as he had his show detail on your channel. You guys still was trying to throw shots at him. You know, it. this is, this is the BS that I don't like. Stay 1,000 with it. You know, Skip and Shannon, they were talking bad about him. Especially Shannon and Rob Parker talking bad about Kobe. But then you want to give him um, love and shoot him some um, honor or give him respect when he's gone. You guys didn't give him his flowers while he was here. And that's sad. Kobe Bryant was a guy who just wanted to play basketball. And he fulfilled the year 20 years. A ball, that was great. But Rachel Nichols, for you to sit up there and lie and say that is downright awful.
So thank you for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, share this. Hit the notification bell to select all to receive upcoming notifications. And if you like what you hear, you can donate to the page by cash apping me at the word welcome, the number two, and then HDIITV. Thank you all for listening, and we are out. Deezy!